Escadela Cata, Embrace Cadilla Shabacata Prendegia, Shadigades, Cadeba, Mantebra, Kepro Shabicatos Cadilla Cata, Medebaratusia, the opening of the eyes, Ginas Cabadi Cataliata, Grantes Cadeba Dida Cata. So, prayer model number one, let's do a quick recap. Praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. Number two, declaring scriptures in prayer. Can I give you number three? Number three is called the prayer of inquiry. Hmm. This is a very powerful model. Please follow carefully. The prayer of inquiry. That means you can, in the place of prayer, the purpose of that prayer is not to declare. The purpose of that prayer is to come back with answers. The prayer of inquiry. First Samuel chapter 30, please. And verse 8. First Samuel chapter 30. Is God helping someone's prayer life? Let's read it together, please, if you can see. Are you ready? One, two, read, please. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. This is the kind of prayer to pray before you take major sensitive destiny defining decisions the prayer of inquiry do you know why this prayer is important because the bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man believers listen to me there is a way that seemeth right unto a preacher there is a way that seemeth right unto a young graduate there is a way that seemeth right unto a nigerian but the Bible says the end. You can see it looking very attractive. I hope you know Satan does not use evil alone to destroy. When he uses evil and you can detect it, he will use good. For instance, a visa on your passport. A visa on your passport does not necessarily mean God wants you to relocate. Now, there's nothing wrong with relocating. Are we together? But I'm saying that there are many times Satan will use good things to destroy you. Sometimes an employment letter can be the worst thing that would have happened to you. Hmm. What God intends to give you is not good against evil, it's life. Because both good and evil came from the same tree. So there are times that Satan will use a lot of good. If he sees that you are fighting bad friends, he will bring good friends who can destroy you. The most important thing is that you are destroyed. Are we together? When Satan came to Jesus, how many of you know that what he used for his temptation, the raw material for tempting Jesus was, it is written. He did not tell him, go and take a bottle of some alcohol that the Roman soldiers take. No, he came and said, it is written. He shall put his angels charge. I mean, if you hear someone quoting scripture that much, you want that person to be your friend. And yet the name of the person quoting it is Satan. So just because something carries the carriage of good, I pray that God is helping someone this morning. There are many good things that are destructive to your destiny. I tell you sincerely many good things you must sustain the power to reject both good and bad things the programming that makes you frown on all at only bad things you would have given yourself cheaply to satan weapons are fashioned and fashioning is a product of study what is this person what does this person want at this point oh you are so lonely you need a good friend and satan will bring somebody who is sincere but not wise that person becomes a reason for your destruction everything you tell that person he or she will go and tell everybody because he brought somebody who has not worked with the weak the weakness of managing relationships the person is not evil the person is just not wise oh we are still trusting god for a child we say really okay let's pray and then the next thing you see another person sending you a text in the night that which you are looking for that i've heard about may god give you and you're saying where did this come from now <laughs> good things can destroy you many good things have destroyed destiny many 
many. Do you believe what you are hearing? Should I pursue? Should I overtake? You see, sometimes when all the variables are there, chances are excellent that you may develop pride and not need God again. The certificate is there. My uncle is now a senator, which is an advantage. Oh, my, my sister in America told me, you just submit this. There's an assurance that in one month, your passport will be stamped. At that point, it doesn't make sense to ask God, should I pursue? Because you suspect, what if he says no? In the presence of all these great opportunities. Do you know why many people don't ask God for answers? They suspect that he will reject it. And you are, you are mostly right. Because the moment you start asking God, that means you are saying, I am willing to walk with whatever you tell me. The way we fight God is proof that we were not serious about asking him, should I pursue? You've already prepared the horse. You've dressed the horse. You've climbed on the chariot. You are ready to go. The horse has even started moving and said, oh good God, should I pursue? So that it will be on record that I ask you. And God will say, come back. And you say, I knew it. I reject that spirit. It can't be God. The Bible says the path of the job. So you were not really serious about inquiring. Let me tell you how to hear from God. Be willing to accept any answer as a sign that you trust his will for your life. If not, your hearing will always be wrong. I can tell you 90% of our prayer of inquiry, we already have our answers. What we are largely doing is hoping God agrees with you. That's the truth. How do I know that? The difficulty, the way we fight God back after he speaks. If you are fortunate and your answer, his answer is consistent with what you've always wanted. Then you now say, now I knew it. I knew it. God, should I start that business? I already have my 10 million. I'm not asking you for money. Just give me permission. And God says, go ahead. And you rejoice. Say, I, this is the kind of God I want to serve. But while you are praying and God says, that 10 million is not for you. Bring it to the king's court. You say, what did I say? No. God cannot do this kind of bad thing knowing how Nigeria is now. This is not God. This is a familiar spirit and I curse that spirit. God, if it's you, verify and your first dream becomes somebody that God uses. Maybe it's even me. I will say, obey God as he has said. You get up and say, I hate all these people. No, I don't. <laughs> the prayer of inquiry is a very risky prayer adventure you must love God and trust him to delve into this one because it would disrupt many of your plans but one assurance I leave with you is the kind of glory that will come out of your life when God directs you when he led them when he led them Moses said do not let us depart from here let me tell you this sometimes using our frame of mind and our frame of thinking our plans can be so beautiful based on how we've seen it but how many of you know that his thoughts are higher than your thoughts help me that his way is higher than your ways god god's thoughts will always be infinitely better and greater than what you ever imagined but you see one thing with god is that he does not strive with the spirit of man for long there are people today who have lost in business because god told them they pretended they did not hear him when the holy spirit comes to you comes to you and you keep resisting him he will honor you and leave you but for that consequence you can be sure you will go through it hmm. please ask god questions you don't need to ask god silly questions like um should i wear a black shoe or a white shoe he says the answer is in your brain that one god has given you don't have to make a mockery of god like that but let me tell you i am convinced that in a man's life you will not make more than 10 or 20 destiny defining decisions destiny defining decisions are not many it is at such times when seasons are about to change when certain decisions involve god oh, for instance where do i relocate for the next 20 years with my children that's not something to make over coffee destinies will suffer from it 
Am I wasting your time? Yes. Who do I marry? How many children do I have? Lord, there are five men coming and honestly, based on me, oh, this second one, this the kind of potential I'm seeing there is very convincing. Is that true? You've not read of people who turn from grass, from uh, what was grace to grass, and others who went from grass to grace. You would have looked at David if you saw David in the wilderness and you took David to your home. Maybe they would drive David away, but that was a king you were driving away. Honestly, let me tell you to be carnally minded truly is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace it is only god who knows the future of men's destinies and there are times you need to lock up yourself you have an opportunity for a great job an oil company and then god is calling you into ministry don't assume you can assume you are called into ministry and reject the oil company and find out you were not called into the fivefold ministry you think i'll say it the other way around there are times where you are not called the oil company was what you would have taken and you reject it just assuming that because you will suffer as if God did not call you and at a point you say what is wrong and God will say I call you generally but not to this assignment every wrong decision wasting your destiny some of you made careless destiny decisions and prayed may the God of mercy I'm praying again may the God of mercy help you may the God of mercy come through for you in the name of Jesus Christ when I began to sense in my heart that God would have me leave Zaria to Abuja I loved Zaria so much I mean ministry was going exceptionally well God was doing something within that region that I had not seen since I came there. It was, it, was a, it was a season of phenomenal ministerial strides. How does God come in the midst of nothing and now says, I struggled with God for three years. And there are prayers where you say, God, confirm. You have asked for trouble. God will confirm it anyway. You will use dreams, a scripture, visions, enemies, friends. Everything will confirm it. God for you it's interesting to know how i finally camped in abuja it was during covid i just returned from london where the last set of people to leave and i thank god for that i would have been trapped in that place for three months i returned back to abuja preparing to go for a miracle service in zaria when they just announced the lockdown they said nobody is going anywhere i stayed in abuja and that was it you see that now but I used that opportunity alone. I started praying. And God said, finally, now that I have your attention, this is the new season finally we're stepping into. Okay, I started praying. By the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, the map of the globe. Keep praying on it. That is your assignment. I look at myself now and wonder, what if I resisted and say, you don't know what you are doing. You, don't, you are not in Zaria, oh God. I'm the one who knows what is happening he will leave you but you will see that you will keep seeing things in the spirit that you are rising and it will never manifest for some of you after this conference go for a retreat bring your major plans for this year and for the next 10 years don't assume take this as a prophetic instruction don't assume you are about to take decisions that affect your establishment don't hurry decisions no it's worth it to if you get a decision right it can redeem 20 years you miss out on a decision is like the hand of the clock it will come back but time will be lost and destiny is measured as a unit of time who is god speaking to please go for a retreat so after this conference thank god for the women go for a retreat lord i'm not going to make this major financial decision major marital decision major ministerial decision i cry unto you the god of all grace speak to me what is the next season of my life church is quiet i'm assuming that the word is entering your spirit praise the name of the lord
that's why you can see ordinary people who don't look like it but their decisions are always destiny defining you know why they have mastered the art of engaging this prayer god should i pursue should i overtake should i pursue you will see a building that does not make sense and the spirit of god tells you let's go to the place of prayer fast for two days by the second day god will tell you this building you see a company is coming to buy it in two months buy it now you will sell it for 10 times the price buy it now other people they leave all these carcass but because you had him you can just go with childlike faith and even make a deposit just to trap it down Two weeks later, people are calling you and saying, X, Y, Z, you say, I can't believe it. Is it a scam? They say, no, they need this building. Whatever price, name your price, add profit, add commit, add everything. We still want it. And someone will look at you and say, how, how is your life working like this? The power of hearing from God. This is the model that many of our fathers in the faith taught us. They would tell you, God said this look at where rccg is for instance you know every time i have the opportunity to pass that place i imagine if god told me to go to that place i will most likely disobey honestly i'm being sincere with you under god i will most likely i'll ask him for forgiveness later on but most likely i would have disobeyed when you see the end point of prophecy it looks glorious but you rewind in your mind and see that bush that's when you see the power of hearing god but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Behind the giant strides that trail believers is obedience to something they are sure God said. Can I tell you this? If you take a step knowing and or believing it was God that led you and God sees the sincerity of your heart even if you are in error he would defend you for his namesake this is one thing I know about God that means if I walk through this LED believing that it was a door and believing that it was God that told me to walk there God will carry a door and put there for my sake to make sure that it is not that I trust in him is a risk look at what he told Peter if it be thou bid me come peter verified this is an example of such prayer peter said tell me if you are the one and he said come peter took the step of faith but because he was sinking god took responsibility it was at my word and he held him don't be afraid of obeying god there is a system to defend his name in your life sometimes when you become too calculative and scientific Okay, God, you've told me this, but let's consider, we'll review this again in 2027. It won't work that way. There are times you have to trust God and walk on water. This is a word for someone. You have to trust God and walk on water. Being unnecessarily scientific will not get you forward. He said, register the company. Don't ask questions. Go and register the company. Where will I get the contract? Leave that to God. You take a step of faith. He says, go for a three-day retreat. Don't say, God, what for? It's disobedience. You just go there first. After the first day, you are prayed, you are hungry, you don't even know what you are doing in that room. You just stay there. The answer is coming. Hmm. Let me give you the last one. 